Hello, my name is Florence Carton. I am a French PhD student from both Stéolist and Ensta Paris, and I'm going to talk about our research on how to use semantic information to improve generalization in reinforcement learning for autonomous driving. So what motivation do we have for this work? Well, first we are interested in vision-based autonomous driving, and more precisely on end-to-end -end autonomous driving, which is a direct mapping from row inputs to driving commands. We think it is promising because there is no need to separately optimize each subsystem, which is the case in traditional autonomous driving approach. Also, generalization is a key component for autonomous driving. Indeed, autonomous cars have to deal with unknown situations like new town or different driving conditions. We also believe that reinforcement learning is a very promising field for autonomous driving, but generalization is seldom addressed in reinforcement learning problems. It is actually very common that the test environment is the same as the training one. In this work, we are using Kala Simulator and its associated benchmark. So our trainings will be realized in one town and we will evaluate them um, on, so on the benchmark, on training conditions, but also on unseen environment, new town and different weather conditions. Do you have a few examples here? Okay, very briefly on reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning is a trial and error approach. The agent, a car in our case, is interacting with an environment, a town in Kala Simulator. For each step, the agent receives a state from the environment. Uh, here, the state is uh, the, uh, the, um, an image from the road and a uh, driving instruction like turn left, turn right, and some measurements like current speed. The agent will compute an action, accelerate, brake, steer, and send this action to the environment. The environment will then compute the next state, next road image, next uh, current speed, plus a reward. And this reward indicates if the agent behaves good. If the agent drives well, it will be a good reward, and if it like collided into something, it will be a very negative reward. The objective of the agent is to maximize the sum of reward it, ca it can get. To train our agent, we use the following architecture. So as I just said, inputs are current image of the road uh, plus some measurements, and we use current speed and current steering angle. The driving instruction is not directly given as an input. The image is passed through a CNN and speed and angle through fully connected layers, its features are then concatenated. We use then a branched architecture to take the driving instruction into account. Well, in other words, there is one branch per driving instruction, one branch turn left, one turn right, etc. They all have the same architecture, but they're all independent. And using branches is a way to force the agent to take the driving instruction into account. Because in our case, we have a constant interaction with the environment to collect the data. So we cannot balance the inputs to have the same amount of each driving command. So this is a way to avoid having one command prevailing over the others. Outputs are um, the action, acceleration, brake, steer, and the value. And the value is an estimation of how good a state is, how good reward, how much reward I can expect from this state. We compute the value because we use PPO algorithm to train our network, and PPO is the nectar critic algorithm that needs uh, computing the value. The reward we use uh, for the training is a sum of three terms. One term um, is about the speed, so we have a target speed, and the closer our car uh, gets to the speed, the better. And the two other terms are about the angle the car makes with the road, and the distance to the road center, and for both, the smaller the better. And we also have a punishment, so negative reward in case of collision, off-road, or bad stop. And a bad stop is when uh, the car stops for no reason. The problem is that simply training this network and this with all these parameters and reward will lead to poor result and actually very bad generalization. So we need to help training. We decided to use semantic segmentation because our assumption is that semantic segmentation contains almost all the necessary information to drive. Indeed, if you have a car in front of you, the color of the car doesn't matter. You just need to know that there is a car. 
So to verify that assumption, we train our model with semantic segmentation as an input instead of images. And we evaluate it on uh, the color benchmark. So this benchmark measures the, perform the performance uh, and so the percentage of successful episodes in different conditions. So training conditions, both the new weather, new town, and new town and new weather. And as you can see, if we use semantic segmentation as an input, we can perfectly generalize. The problem lies more in image understanding than on the driving condition and the driving task. But perfect segmentation is not available in real world. So we train a semantic segmentation network um, on training condition and we evaluate it uh, on the driving task. And it is still perfect on training town, but less on uh, when we try to generalize on an unseen town. And the problem is that it's no more end-to-end. -end. We have two separate optimization, one for um, segmentation and one for driving. And we also still want to have the image as an input for, for the work for on red light, traffic sign, etc. So uh, what are the other ways we can use to add semantic information but still um, have uh, RGB images are imp as inputs? Our first idea was to add semantic segmentation in the data augmentation. The second one was to pre-train a CNN with semantic segmentation task. And the last, uh, the last test we made was train semantic segmentation as an auxiliary task. Considering the data augmentation, well, we use classical data augmentation, a uh, combination of Gaussian blur, salt and pepper noise, partial erasing, and variation in new and saturation. And to add semantic information, we randomly change the color of one semantic part of the image. So we randomly change the color of the road, for instance, the sidewalk or the road lane, to add some more um, information. To pre-train the CNN with semantic uh, segmentation task, uh, we train a LinkNet because it's based on ResNet 34 uh, on to to segment uh, an image, and we use the in the weights to initialize the CNN for the driving task. And last but not least, the autonomous driving with semantic segmentation as an auxiliary task. Um, we train the segmentation and the driving at the same time. So driving is still trained with reinforcement learning and segmentation is trained with classical supervised learning and we combine the two losses. But instead of classical weighted sum, we use a homoscedastic loss. We have two trainable parameters, the two sigmas you can see on the, formul the formula. And um, this will uh, balance the two losses during training. Now I'm showing you the results of all these uh, trainings. So the basic training uh, with image as input and no data augmentation has actually very poor performance and very bad generalization. This is why we decided to add something more and um, when we add the documentation, we observe directly much higher results, and especially on the third line, when we add semantic information. So tr um, performance on the training condition are better and much improved on the unseen environment when we add semantic information. However, there is still well progress to be made. When we pre-train our CNN, we again increase the performance and we reach pretty high on the training conditions. However, we do not reduce the gap between, well, training town and test town. We increase the overall performance, but not this gap. An auxiliary task is actually the only method that allows to reduce this gap between train and test. We, we reach more than 90% on training condition and almost 70 on both um, new town and new town and new weather. And uh, finally, we compare our work with closed approaches from state of the art. The first one, uh, the first test that was made on Kala Simulator uh, with reinforcement learning, 
it was made with A3C algorithm and no data accommodation at all. And as you can see, the results are very close to the one we got um, with no data augmentation. The second one is, the, is more recent. It was trained with imitation learning and fine-tuned with reinforcement learning. And the last one is ours with auxiliary task. And you, you can see that ours outperformed the, the two others in terms of generalization. To conclude, um, well, what we demonstrated that semantic segmentation is the key to better generalize, and using it as an auxiliary task is a very effective approach for autonomous driving, and the best we tested so far. And uh, well chosen auxiliary tasks is the best way to improve generalization capabilities in reinforcement learning for autonomous driving, and one reason for that that the agent will have a better internal representation of the environment. In this case, for instance, it will be more able to map negative reward with semantic information. And finally, auxiliary task also allows to have one training, so one optimization and no intermediate steps. For future work, well, we can imagine using different auxiliary tasks like depth prediction or optical flow to add temporality and maybe train all auxiliary tasks at the same time. Thank you for your attention.